Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and the weekend series with the Nationals is over, and despite losing by 15 runs yesterday, that still only counts as one loss, and the Mets took two out of three from the division rival Nationals. Uh, I was very pleased with the, uh, with the weekend series, of course with the exception of the last two innings of yesterday's game, but I want to talk about the, uh, the three-game set. Uh, and also preview the series upcoming with the Chicago Cubs. The uh, Mets starting rotation has really rounded into form over these last several weeks. Um, and I think really we can we can trace that back to Jason Vargas's last three starts. So let's say maybe the last three weeks of, of, uh, of starting pitching from the Mets has been really, really good. Um, Jason Vargas once again pitched extremely well on Friday night. Um, on Saturday, Zach Wheeler once again pitched extremely well. And yesterday, Steven Matz also pitched extremely well. So that's three consecutive really good quality starts, not like BS quality starts, you know, the 4.5 ERA quality start, which I don't think is a quality start, but um, I'm talking like seven innings of work, uh, one run or less allowed, you know, like really stellar, stellar pitching. And it, it, if there's a glimmer of hope for next year, it has to be this. It has to be that the pitching staff as a unit seems to have been seems to be feeding off each other a little bit um and and maybe we can sort of go back and look at the way Jacob deGrom has uh performed this entire season as the um you know the anchor that's holding this whole thing down or propping it up whichever way you want to you want to frame it but um for whatever reason this the Mets pitcher Mets starting pitchers uh have really as a group collectively pitched really, really well. And it's it's a positive sign leading into next year. Um, offensively, the Mets didn't do all that much um, over the weekend series. They did enough to win, which is fine. Um, Jeff McNeil has an 11-game hitting streak, I believe, at this point. Uh, did leave yesterday's game with um, a quad issue or a leg issue of some sort. I didn't see anything since then, but I, hopefully it's nothing serious. And uh, McNeil doesn't have to miss much time, uh, if any, uh, as a result of it. Um, but, you know, the offense did, like I said, just enough to uh, just enough to get the Mets two wins out of three against the Nationals. Um, the one thing I will say um, is that last week I had some really positive things to say about the Mets bullpen. And, you know, for those of you that are, that believe in superstitions and follow that sort of stuff, like, I generally don't. But I, one exception to that rule I like to adhere to is the Gary Jinx. And I find it funny that I think it was actually an early, early in yesterday's game. Uh, maybe it was in the, the Saturday game. But regardless, um, Gary was making a, a point about how strong the work out of the bullpen has been. And for those of you that know this about Gary Cohen, when he makes a proclamation like that, it always seems that shortly thereafter things fall apart for whatever it was he was talking about. Jacob deGrom hasn't allowed a home run in 37 innings. Next batter, home run. You know, that sort of stuff happens, seems to happen a lot. And I always affectionately refer to that as the Gary Jinx. Uh, I think he Gary Jinxed the bullpen yesterday. Um, across two innings yesterday, the bullpen allowed 15 runs. I'm oh, sorry, 14 runs. Yeah. Matt's allowed one of them. But uh, 14 runs across two innings, um, uh, that was a sort of a triple threat, three-headed monster there by Paul Sewald, who got things started by, um, by lighting a fire. Tyler Bachelor came in and threw some gasoline on it. And then in the next inning, Corey Oswald came in and he made his own fire. So it was like two big fires raging next to each other. The Nationals broke out for 14 runs. Um, but again, like I said, uh, one loss. It only counts as one loss. So um, run differential wise, the Nats look like they're a much better team than the Mets this year. But uh, 
the results don't really dictate that. The, the one loss record, I should say, doesn't really dictate that. Um, that being said, um, and back to the bullpen, back to the Gary Jinx, um, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sort of letting, letting yesterday's game be like an outlier, and I, I still do believe that this bullpen is going to be a real strong asset for this team going forward. I think next year we're going to see more out of Tyler Bachelor. We're going to see more out of Drew Smith. We're going to see more out of these guys who are, A, uh, very inexpensive, <laughs> which I think is the key, and, B, show a ton of upside and promise. Um, and there's enough of that stockpiled up that the Mets should be able to piece together a, a decent bullpen for 2019 without going out and spending the money on pieces like Anthony Swarzak. I've, I've been sort of saying that for the last two weeks or so, but I'm feeling it more and more. And as I see the bullpen um, um, c come in and do an effective job, I, I'm more and more believing that that is going to be the case for next year. So, um, Last thing I'll talk about is the upcoming series with the Chicago Cubs. Um, the Cubs are red hot, haven't lost since they acquired Daniel Murphy last week. Um, <laughs> So the Mets will go into Chicago, uh, which which uh, at Wrigley, uh, starting tonight, and they have a three-game set with the Cubs. I don't feel so great about our odds in these these three games, but um, uh, Syndergaard tonight and Degrom tomorrow. So let's see what happens. Uh, if if nothing else, maybe the Mets arms can keep the Cubs off the board long enough for a Mets bat to scratch a run across the plate. But we'll see how that unfolds. As far as uh, as far as the rest of this week and this uh, these videos are concerned, um, today might be the last video I'm able to record until Friday. I am going to be out of town tomorrow through Thursday, so um, my rental car situation being what it might well be, I don't know that I'm going to be able to have a, a video set up like this one um, in that car. So uh, I have a little clippy thing that goes on the. Um, what you call it, the AC vent there, uh, and it just doesn't do a great job of like capturing video in a rental car. So I've tried it a couple of times; it's failed. I will try it again because I will be doing a bit of driving. But um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I will be back on Friday if I'm not back sooner. So that was really helpful. I'll be there Friday if I'm not back before then. So in other words, if I'm back before Friday, I'll see you before Friday. But if not, I will see you Friday during which I will uh, recap the Cubs series. Thursday is an off day, by the way. So the Cubs series, Monday through Wednesday, um, much needed off day for the Mets on Thursday. And then they head out to San Francisco to play the Giants at the end of the week for the weekend. Um, but anyway, I'll be back Friday or before to talk about this week's Cubs series and preview the weekend set with the Giants. Until then, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. That's M-I-S-T-E-R underscore M-E-T. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, let's go Mets.